Hey guys, this is Tech Howdy. I welcome you to another video tutorial where we are building this CMS application using Angular 10 and ASP.NET Core 3. In the last video tutorial, we finished working on the auth method of the auth service class. Here we are validating the login details that are coming in from the user via the login form. And if the authentication is successful, then we are returning a auth token, which is basically a JWT token which is sent via this token response model that we have created. Now, when the validation is successful, we are creating this token using the generate new token method. And in this tutorial, we will be working on the generate new token method. So here we are going to write the logic to generate a new JWT token and return it back in the token response model. So go ahead and create the generate new to token method. Here in the generate new token method, we will be passing the application user object and the login view model that we received via from the login request for the auth method. So here inside the generate new token method, we will go ahead and write the code that is needed to create the token, create the JWT token and encrypt this token using a encryption key. As mentioned in the admin authentication handler that we are going to apply two layers of encryption on the token. While we are decrypting this token, we are going to decrypt, we decrypt the token using these, uh, the encryption key that was stored in the database in the token model class. Now, in the authentication service, we need to make sure that when we create the token, we store the key for that token in the token model class as well or token model table. So starting with step one here, we will first get our key to encrypt the JWT token from our app settings file. In the app settings file, I have provided the key to encrypt the JWT token. As mentioned before that this key is just used for demonstration purposes. If you want to deploy this application on production machine, you should use a string that is more secure and cannot be easily cracked. If I go back to the authentication service, now I have the key to encrypt the JWT token. In the step two, I will get the roles of the user. So all the roles that are associated of, to the user can be fetched using the user manager dot get roles async. The next step would be to create a token handler. The token handler or the JWT token handler, security token handler object can be used to create tokens. Before we create the token, we need to describe our token. When I say describe our token, it means we need to tell the token handler what data we need to store inside the tokens. So we are going to store the username, we are going to store the JTI, which is basically a GUID, a unique string that is used to identify the token. The username will be the subject of our token, basically used to identify who this token was issued to. We'll also save the claim types, which is dot name identifier. So we are going to create claims that we are going to store inside the token. And the claim is issued to a specific user. So we will provide the ID of that user. As we know, the user ID is going to be unique always. Next, then we have to also store the role of the user. So we already fetch the roles of the user using the user manager dot get roles async method and now here whichever is the first or default role of the user i am assigning the value to this claim types dot role property finally in the claim we also need to store what time this token was created or issued to the user after creating the claims for the token we also need to add some additional information like the sign in credentials this is the signature that we are going to use to sign the token. In this project, we are using 256 bit encryption or 256 signature security algorithms. If I go back to the admin authentication handler, here at step 14, we added a validation to check if the signature of the token matches the signature that we have used to create the token. If you are using the same signature, which is 256 bit encryption, then make sure that that particular signature matches your validation here. So if I am using 
256 bit to encrypt the token here then i will use the validation in my authentication handler over here as well i cannot change this to 512 or something else it needs to match the same signature now finally the issuer and the audience is basically the token like who the token is issued to or who the token is issued from so if i go to the app settings file the site that issued the token is my website and the audience it is issued to is for my audience for my website so you can change this accordingly to your own domain name or you can add any string over here that you like it doesn't have to be a domain domain name and at the end i am going to assign the expiry time of the token here in the expiry time while i'm setting the expiry time i'm checking if the role of the user is administrator if the role of the user is administrator then i'm making sure that the token expires in 60 minutes which is one hour if the role of the user is not administrator then i'm going to set the expiry time of the token according to the app settings file and i have assign the expiry time over here which is 60 minutes you can change this value to whatever you like and you can also change the 60 minutes of the admin token to whatever you like you can change it to 100 you can change it to 10 so the reason i said this to 60 minutes or one hour is because if the admin signs in and forgets to log out or is idle for more than an hour then we want the admin to log back again the cookie should expire if the admin forgets to log out and leaves the uh, state of the application logged in then somebody else can access the backend panel of your application and try to do changes which is a security flaw so in my personal recommendation i would even reduce this to 30 minutes but for this demonstration purposes of this application i left it one hour which is 60 minutes after we have create the, the description for our token next step is to go ahead and create the token in the admin authentication handler we decrypted the token in two stages so there are two layers of decryption which also means that there are there should be two layers of encryption so here i am first creating two keys to encrypt the token these are unique uh, keys using the guid class uh, system.guid class and using the new guid method we can create a unique string every time these unique strings will never match each other so i'm creating these strings and going to use them as a key to encrypt our tokens now the next step would be to create a data protection instance and then to create a protector instance to protect the token while creating the protector instance we need to specify what key we need to use to create the protector so this protector instance is for jwt encryption so we are going to use the key that we have generated here for this uh, particular jwt token so also one thing we need to understand that every token that we are going to create is going to be uh, encrypted using a unique key every time so two users cannot have a same key to decrypt the token now we will generate the token using the token handler class calling the create token method and here we need to specify the uh, description object which is the security token descriptor which we are passing as parameter so now the token is created after the token is created we need to encrypt this jwt token so we are going to encrypt it using the protect method and we are going to pass in the token so we are using the token handler dot write token method we will create the jwt token and we will pass it to the protect method now our jwt token is created and protected at this stage now we need to store the information of this token in our database we need to store this uh, token encryption key so that the next time when the user tries to uh, access a protected view like in our case the user will try to access the home page of the admin panel and at this stage we are going to authenticate the user using the admin authentication handler 
and we are going to decrypt the token and to decrypt the token we need the encryption key so this encryption key once the token is issued will will be deleted from the memory of your application so we need to make sure we save it somewhere and therefore we are going to save it in the database in the token model table and we will use it in the admin authentication handler when the request comes in so now we will go ahead and try to store this uh, token in the table before we store it in the table we also need to make sure we create the refresh token as well so we can save both the details at the same time because we have created a key to encrypt the refresh token but we haven't used it yet so we'll use it now we have already created the jwt token and encrypted it we also need to encrypt the refresh token as well to create the refresh token we are going to add a extension method we are going to call this extension method as create refresh token and we are going to supply the client id the user id and the expiry time of the refresh token the refresh token once created will be returned back to the method that is calling it so in our case here in this generate new token method we are going to call the refresh token method and create a new refresh token while creating the new refresh token we are not adding any encryption key or uh, for the refresh token or the jwt token we will assign those values here the client id comes from the app settings file here in the app settings you can once again change it to something more secure that you feel or you can leave it as it is it depends totally on you we are going to use this client id only in the refresh tokens now going back to the main method which is the generate new token method here we need to do certain steps before we send back the token to the auth method and the steps would be first we will create a new refresh token and then we will create a assign the values of the encryption key so the values are stored in the encryption key rt property and encryption key jwt property so these values we are assigning it to the property over here on a refresh token because we need to store these values in the database once we have assigned the value the next thing that we want to do here in this try block is first check in our database if there are any old tokens associated with the user if there are any old tokens associated with the user first we will delete them before adding any new tokens we don't want a user to have multiple tokens stored in the database therefore first we delete old tokens and then we add the new tokens once the tokens have been added to the database then we will return a response where we will encrypt the token and we will return it back to the auth method now here for the naming convention while we are returning back the token i have mentioned that this is layer one protector so think about it like this this is layer one protector which means that when we are going to decrypt the token the last layer of protection becomes the first layer of dec decryption in your uh, admin authentication handler so the layer one protection is the final protection of the token so here in admin authentication handler when we are decrypting it the first stage of decryption will be the layer one protect unprotecting this layer so here we are protecting this particular token using a key and the key comes from the application user property which is stored in the data protection uh, section over here in the app settings so this key will be used for the final uh, protection of the token so that's layer 2 protection and when we are decrypting it here in layer 1 we are using the same key to decrypt it at layer 1 in the admin authentication handler might sound a bit confusing how the encryption and decryption process works but we will go step by step by setting up breakpoints and we will see how this decryption works so you will understand it better when we go in step by step mode debugging each step of our code now for this particular method after returning the encrypted or token we are done and now we can return this encrypted token back to our auth method and then the auth method method will return the response 
back to the uh, user with a valid auth token now that should be it for generate new token method if you have any questions or any doubts about the steps that were performed while creating this method use the comment section and i'll be happy to answer them if you think anything is missing you can give me a heads up and i will include it but now the next step of our video tutorial will be to start consuming these methods that we created in our login view so that we can log in the user and then assign him the tokens or assign him or her the tokens so for this video tutorial that's it please like and subscribe my channel all the code will be in the devops repo in case if i miss adding any files please use the comment section and i will uh, immediately add them as soon as i can uh, and i have seen some comments where users have mentioned that i've missed adding certain files i do apologize but i will add them so please don't forget to mention the name of the file in your comment thank you